everyone. Welcome to the PyCharm Fast API tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to set up the Fast API project with PyCharm. So we're going to use the PyCharm EAP 2021.3, which includes Fast API project support. EAP stands for Early Access Program, but very soon, probably when you're watching this, it will be part of the stable release. Just for your information, I'm running this entire project in a virtual machine through VMware Workstation, which has Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Let's begin. So before going ahead, we have to create a virtual environment. If you're interested, you can even make a virtual environment from PyCharm itself, but I would like to go with the terminal. I will run the command python 3-m space venv space fastenv, f-a-s-t-e-n-v. Okay, our environment has been successfully created. Let's move ahead with PyCharm. So for running PyCharm in my system, I normally use the toolbox offered by JetBrains. It updates automatically, updates the plugins together with the IDE, Let's me roll back and downgrade. I can maintain multiple PyCharm versions side by side and even use different products offered by JetBrains. Definitely a great tool for saving time and effort. So I'm going to click on PyCharm 2021.3 EAP because it contains the fast API project type. I'll click on new project. You can see on the left side, the fast API project type is now there. I'm going to change the project location to e-commerce. As you can see, you create the new environment or use a previously configured one. There are many flavors provided by PyCharm like Docker, remote SSH, WSL, and that's for PyCharm professional. I'm going to click on the previously configured interpreter. It has automatically picked up the location. This is because I've used the same environment name for a different project earlier. Everything looks good. I'm going to click on create. Awesome, our project got successfully bootstrapped. Now, before going ahead, let me increase the font size, make it easier for you to read. PyCharm has generated two files, main.py and test under main.http. The main.py contains two APIs, root and say hello. The root is going to return a JSON response with a message, hello world. And the say hello function returns a string, which accepts a parameter name from the user. As you can see, it only took eight lines of code to write our first API. The test under main.http contains the fast API endpoints where you can test your REST APIs, something similar to Newman CLI. So let's begin by running our application. I will click on run and then run e-commerce. You can observe the console output. It is running successfully on localhost on port 8000. I will open the browser and check over there. Yes, it works fine. I got the response, hello world. Let me try to modify the message and verify it once again. I will change hello world to hello PyCharm. Let me save it as you can, 
It also has the auto reload enabled. Let me refresh the page and yes, it works. Fast API also generates automatic API docs for us at the path slash docs, D-O-C-S. It uses the open API standard for defining the API. It also uses two flavors, Swagger UI and Redoc. Let me test one of our APIs. I'm going to pass the name and click on execute. And yes, it works. You can see the response message, hello sample. You can do a lot of things with docs if you want to play around and definitely check the official documentation. I'm going to provide a little more meta information to my docs like title, description, version, etc. Let me save it and refresh. Great, you can see that title, description, and version have been updated. You can also disable it while your application is running in production, so you don't want to expose docs to the outside world. You can see now it's showing not found. This is really cool. You can change the path name in docs under URL to point to a different path name, completely up to you. Let me show you one more interesting thing. I'm going to change the name from string to integer. Now, you can observe in the docs that it needs integer now to be passed instead of a string. Even if I pass a string, it's not going to accept it. You don't even need to write a separate validation for it. This is thanks to Pydantic and type hints in Python. This makes life easy. I hope you're going to explore many more amazing features provided by FastAPI. Roll up your sleeves. In the next video, we're going to look into integrating FastAPI with Postgres, along with outlining our project.